This is a Christmas village that we put together using the Elumaison lanterns. In French, a lantern is called a fanal. So the tradition in Haiti, these are referred to as Christmas fanal and the plural is fano. You can see there's a variety of different styles here. Each of these are is available on its own, but they look absolutely beautiful together. What is the architectural style of these lanterns? Well, there's a real variety here. In the middle, you may recognize this house. It's called the Painted Lady. It's one of the row houses on Steiner Street in San Francisco, right in front of Alamo Square. And it's one of the most photographed scenes in all of San Francisco is that row of houses with the San Francisco skyline in the background. It's very dramatic. What we did was take one of them, the, one of the more um, signature uh, houses, and reproduce it. And the artist who did this, his name is Eric Lafont, really went and studied the details of this from a photograph. He'd never been to San Francisco. And you can see everything is absolutely exquisitely rendered in perfect detail from the columns to the fretwork, all the little, you can see the little wooden uh, latticework. It's just so finely done. Um, the little columns uh, in the attic window. And what we've done is to make it into a Christmas lantern by adding the colored tissue paper in the windows and lighting it up. So that's one that is really uh, at home in the Bay Area. Some of the other styles come from further away and are typical of the Haitian architecture. Um, you can see just to the left of the um, painted lady is a house that's done in a typical gingerbread style. Now the gingerbread style was inspired actually by the Victorian architecture of San Francisco and you can see some of the touches from the balcony um, and all the really finely done um, whimsical woodwork, uh, the many doors uh, that open up onto the balcony and downstairs. Um, the gingerbread style is is, is really really charming um, because it is an adaptation of the Victorian style to the Caribbean. Now just to the other side of that, to the left, you can see a typical Haitian church. Um, what makes it so typical are the colors. These are the bright colors that you see in many of the Caribbean islands. Uh, the woodwork is rendered through the details of the geometrical designs that you see and the kinds of scalloping. Uh, you can see the straight lines and the, the, the intersecting lines. And those are meant to really give you a sense of, again, the gingerbread architecture, that this very ornamental wooden architecture. And then just to the other side of that, you'll see this is a Cajun Victorian. That is what inspired this was a house in Louisiana and uh, you'll see that there are really a lot of similarities with the Haitian style. And that's one of the things that brings together the whole collection of Illumaison uh, Fanon or lanterns is this um, similarity in the architecture. And in fact, the Haitians were definitely inspired by what was going on in New Orleans, um, similar French colonial background. Uh, hot climate and so and the Victorian influence and so you'll see that in this Cajun Victorian which is really lovely it has a platform on the bottom which is a great touch uh, that platform illuminates too and gives you the sense of the the this house that is up on a terrace as you'd see in the south um, it even has a little balcony and if you see the little balcony there it has um, this sort of kind of star um, woodcut in it that gives you that sense of that playfulness that you'll find in, in the colonial and Victorian wooden uh, architecture. On the other side of the Christmas village um, 
is another church similar to the one you saw uh, in this typical Haitian church style. This really is the kinds of lantern that you would see on the streets of Haiti in the good old days when people would sell these lanterns at Christmas time. It's a church and most of the, the fano were meant to be churches because after all it is the Christmas season um, and Haiti is an intensely Christian country. Uh, so the church is um, really the typical style. We've added a lot of other styles to it. You'll see to the right is what is called in San Francisco a workers Victorian and this is based on a on a house on Castro Street in San Francisco, uh, not in the Castro, but in Noe Valley on that side of Castro Street. And it's a blue house now, and I just always found it incredibly charming. And so I thought, these workers, Victorians as they're called, because they were kind of smaller, uh, more uh, accessible to the working person. Uh, still, if you lived in this, you probably had some money because there, uh, there was a, quite a bit of wood ornamentation that went into them. But they're small. Most of these houses are about a thousand square feet or smaller. Um, and we wanted to reproduce it to include it uh, as a taste of the Bay Area, but also to show some of the similar architectural styles and really how this Victorian look um, transcends place and, and brings together uh, us in the Bay Area with the people that are making these in Haiti. Um, so this fantasy Christmas village is not your typical village. This is not what you normally see, some Victorian England or uh, New England style, but it is a combination of styles that is found in hot climates in the West, places that you don't normally associate with your traditional Christmas. And um, we've really made a beautiful Christmas village uh, with that. Why don't we have ornaments like these in the United States? Well, it's an interesting question. You think about what is the center of Christmas in the United States, and it is the Christmas tree, uh, which of course comes to us via England, uh, which gets it from Germany, the Tannenbaum, the Christmas tree. Um, and so the ornaments that go on the Christmas tree, that's, the, that's where the emphasis is on, uh, in our country. Of course, there's also the stuff that people have put on their lawns and the lights and whatnot, but you know, the Christmas tree really is the center of Christmas in the United States. Uh, that's not the case in Haiti. And part of the reason is that it is, of course, it has the, the legacy of being a French colony. And in France, as in southern, most of Southern Europe, uh, nativities, nativity sets, are the most important Christmas decoration. People do have trees now, but they didn't always. That is a fairly new thing. And certainly the kinds of beautiful Christmas ornaments that you'll find in the United States or in Germany, you're not going to find um, as much in France. And they, it was always about the nativity, what goes under the scene of the baby Jesus, the manger. And then of course, what grew up around that was trying to reproduce uh, old Bethlehem with the houses and the animals and the, 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 the places of business. And then of course, that was interpreted in terms of the cultures that were creating these nativities. So it wouldn't be authentic to Bethlehem, but it might look more like a French village or a Spanish or Italian village. Um, in Haiti, you have course that history but also this is a country where for decades you have not been able to cut trees down so um, not that we have the kind that the, the spruce trees and the, the the trees that we cut down for Christmas they don't really exist there but they do have a lot of pine trees it's a mountainous country with some chilly climates up in the mountains so there are pine trees um, but you can only cut down branches from them so you have these kind of Charlie Brown Christmas trees, which, you know, frankly are not the prettiest. They're a bunch of scrappy little branches that you put in a bucket with stones. Um, so really, uh, Haitians who are an incredibly artistic people, uh, the country is just flooded with art everywhere you look, uh, created these things that were kind of inspired by what you would put under a tree by the nativity set um, in a country where you don't have 
a lot of wood that you can work with. So they make them out of paper. It's a poor country. A lot of it is recycled stuff. You know, we've made them with poster board for the sake of shipping them easily. They're lightweight. But in Haiti, they would normally use cart, cart from cardboard boxes that were left over. And the artists are not rich people who can really afford to buy expensive um, materials. So they would just get these cardboard boxes that were thrown out or that had been reused many, many times and were finally being um, discarded and use the cardboard as the, to, to make cutouts and then use tissue paper, which is extremely cheap um, or could be left over from gifts. Use that tissue paper to make these. Um, so you have a distinctive tradition that comes out of economic necessity, uh, just not having a lot of money to make things, and also the, the French tradition, and finally, um, this very distinctive Haitian tendency to make things with lots of colors that are really bright and luminous. How do you display these? Well, you can see we've made a village. Um, we've taken a table and put all the different styles that are gonna be available for purchase um, and made a village.